Hello, I'm David Stern from the Defense Information Systems Agency. Uh, this is a, a POC, point of, a proof of concept out brief for uh, the Haywire capability that we developed. Um, and Haywire is a continuous uh, uh, policy uh, monitoring uh, framework. And uh, um, let me orient you real quickly to what we're going to show you, and then we'll move into the demo and actually show you. So basically what you'll see here is you see this is a, a traffic, and traffic is going through multiple devices. These devices happen to be um, a Layer 3 device here, Brocade MLXE, which we have 10 IPsec uh, interfaces on that, uh, providing Layer 3 encryption. Those are uh, moved into a Cisco ASR 9000, which is uh, a, a Layer 2 device, which has MacSec connections. And then, um, not shown here, we have uh, actually Layer 1 encryption as well. Um, and that's happening at 100G. So that's the actual traffic that we're moving in the single direction. And what we're going to show you is how we can ca catch uh, a, a configuration error um, with this continuous uh, uh, network verification tool. And we're going to show how where you, have a, a, you intend to send traffic through an IPsec tunnel, for example, which would be 10 of these in this brocade um, endpoint or layer 3 device, rather. And then um, instead of that, we're going to show you a, a configuration error where we actually send it through an interface instead of the, the tunnel or sub interface. So um, right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to um, actually make that routing change. And that's going to be in the form of uh, this network uh, demo. What I'm doing is logging into the device and then switching the subnets to actually, instead of route through the tunnel, I'm routing through the interface. And the effect of that is, is that it'll, the, the flow will actually be up up to an operator in, in the fact that the traffic will, will transit both the layer 3 and the layer 2 device. But the problem from this perspective is that that's one of two uh, encryptors that won't be uh, utilized. And so that we're not, we don't have the protection profile um, that we would expect. So um, moving on a little bit. We'll, right now, what I'm going to show you is this actual tool. So um, while I'm getting ready, I'll show you how this tool operates. So I'm going to collect all data. This tool happens to go out between all the devices that are connected to it. For this example, we only show four, but this could be hundreds or thousands. It goes out to, that, uh, uh, out to those devices, collects the forwarding tables and other associated tables in the device, brings them back in, and then builds something called a, a graph. And that graph, what that is, is, is a collection of how things can move throughout the, um, the network based on on header information at various level layers and, and what uh, the algorithms ha have shown us. That allows us to, to make policies and then to measure compliance with policies. For example, is something isolated? Um, how do ACLs or firewalls impact um, usability, that kind of stuff? And this is actually at um, at the time that the, these uh, um, configurations were pulled and then the algorithm pushed them into a, a, a network-based graph. So I, I do want to show you briefly some of those policies for here. For this example or this POC, we have a policy that shows that we must have connectivity between the ASR1 and 2. And if we do have that connectivity, then it should be uh, IPsec encrypted. This is pre-production code, so this is just uh, an error. Um, likewise, we also have a policy that shows that uh, this is MLXE1 and MLXE2. We should have IPsec encryption between um, on this subnet between MLXE1 and 2. Um, that's IPsec encryption. And I'll go back to MacSec because I did make a mistake. Um, this is incorrect. Um, I'll show you somewhere else where we're actually looking and checking for MACSEC between ASR1 and ASR2, but not necessarily IPsec. And I'll show you that. So the way this works on um, the way it's displayed is uh, you'll see the MLXE1, which is layer 3, and this is the ASR, which is layer 2. An idea like that uh, PowerPoint slide is, is that they are transitions through that, and it should be encrypted twice, and then we want to catch that if it's not. So uh, I want to show you one other piece of uh, kit here. This right here is, uh, um, this is actually the traffic that's moving through this. And I happen to know that the tunnel is resonant on this interface that is under test. And that's the, the tunnel that we're going to see that uh, has a problem. So right now, you'll see that the, the traffic is running through all these tunnels pretty much the same. 
And then what's going to happen is this collection, when it finishes, which is very close to finishing, uh, the, the, the Veriflow software is going to finish its uh, actual um, algorithm that processes that data. And then it's going to determine that one of the policies that uh, we uh, added has, been, has failed. What's going to happen when that fails is it's going to send the actual uh, device and the interface that uh, is subject to the failed policy to our orchestrator. Our orchestrator is going to take that and actually uh, shut down that flow, um, meaning that this is a serious enough offense that we're going to implement something we call a cyber circuit breaker, and we're going to shut the flow down the minute we realize that, uh, um, that our policy is not what we expect. So we should see that in a minute. You'll see that this actually stops before we see that the policy is actually, um, the snapshot's been processed. So in fact, you see it's already stopped, and because that cyber circuit breaker is already tripped, and that's because our policy has fa failed. So now you'll see a new snapshot here. We'll move to this snapshot, and then I'll explain more about uh, um, what actually just happened and what you saw and why um, this flow stopping is, is important. So now you'll see here that uh, the policy, this IPsec policy, um, failed. And you'll see that this is the policy. It was saying that from MLXE1 to MLXE2 on this uh, tunnel that it should be IPsec encrypted. And that's what failed. It wasn't IPsec encrypted. So what happened was this tool told uh, through an API, told uh, our orchestrator that, it, that we failed this policy. And then our orchestrator went in and shut it down. So that's the cyber circuit breaker part. So I'm going to actually do one more collection. And the reason why I'm going to do one more collection is because this is a snapshot in time. And so this is a feedback loop. So not only did we shut down this, this is before we shut it down, that told us that the policy was valid, invalidated and uh, asked us to do something in which we shut it down. But I'm going to give you a little hint. In two minutes, we're going to show that that connectivity policy that I showed you um, uh, connecti that connectivity policy is not in effect, which means that not only similar to a circuit breaker in your house where you have too much power, and so the circuit breaker trips, and then in that case, the effect is you have the lights that go out. In this case, um, the circuit breaker that we implemented is going to trip, but then we're going to actually um, prevent traffic flowing, and this tool is going to tell us that the lights have gone out in the network, which means basically that the, the traffic that was flowing is no longer flowing. And that gives you the ability to remediate or do other things if that would, is what you want. So we talked about the different policies. And now we know that this encryption policy in this direction is no longer valid, and so um, we shut that down. I showed an automated way which would act at the speed of cyber. Um, you may actually have alerts that go out with uh, different traps and different things, or you could actually pop up a screen on something like this that, w that an operator, a cyber protection team operator, for example, could put in his credentials and then um, actually do the same thing, but have a human go through it if you're worried about this uh, being used against you. While we're waiting for that collection to finish, I do want to show you one thing, and um, I'll show you the level of detail here. So we know that, that down actually to the MACSEC level that this SCI is there. That's actually the connectivity tissue that is a security association between multiple encryptors. You'll see that uh, on, uh, we may go back uh, in this presentation, but there would be another one here, which is SPI, but that's missing because uh, there's no encryption at this layer, and there was prior. And you'll see also that this is IP traffic type and instead of IPsec. So moving, we look at the collection. We're still waiting on this last ASR to re finish its report. Um, when it gets the rest of the data off that, then we'll see that uh, um, very quickly after words, the algorithm will process that and then let us know that there's a new snapshot. And so while we're doing that, I do am going to move back to the previous snapshot before the encryption um, violation. And you'll see here, we'll wait, and then it'll show us that some configurations have changed, but you'll see that's the normal. And then um, here, when we look at, uh, um, we'll, we'll make a little, whoop. Uh, just, I'm gonna get this query for the reachability. This is the same query that can be used in the network. When I'm querying the network to see uh, what the connectivity at this level is, then you'll see this is actually all the actual technical details as we move through the network graph and then through the IPsec 
and here you see that SPY that I was talking about. So you see the SPY there, which is the Security Association for IPsec, and then you'll see here you see the SPY and actually the SEI, which is the what it should look like. And what I showed you previously, it was, wasn't. So now let's move to the final snapshot. So um, we'll move through. So I'll move to the snapshot uh, that showed the encryption violation. So this is the encryption violation. And then we'll move to the final snapshot. Which will show that you have a reachability problem at this point. So you'll see that uh, T.8 is there. Um, and you'll see that, uh, um, that, that that's the feedback me mechanism complete. So what we showed you was how uh, we could use a tool like this to monitor uh, an encryption chain and then how that we would implement a cyber circuit breaker which says that if we relate policy, which in this case policy could be a lot of things, but we had these range of MACSEC and IPSEC policies, we showed you that, that, that this continuous uh, network verification tool could ensure that our policies are being met and then we showed you how we would implement a cyber circuit breaker if uh, those policies weren't met. And then we followed that up with showing you that there's a feedback mechanism that can occur that this snapshot in time could be used to show us that um, the lights were out, so to speak, or that we had implemented a policy, a control measure, a circuit breaker, but then we would know that we implemented that circuit breaker. So uh, all in all, this is this capability of uh, um, verification and something that we haven't seen prior to this. We think this is a deal DOD first, this very well could be uh, a world first. Um, and the idea and the concept that you can take a policy that your network uh, is supposed to be maintaining or um, occurs, that you could actually implement control measures or actions based on the violation of those policies, and then that you would have uh, indication that that happened. So we did want to talk briefly at the end of this presentation about what this technology could grow into. We see that you might be able to actually um, use things like Active Directory and potentially things like uh, DHCP servers on assignment for end user stations to show how, um, and with the network graph or graph technology, you may be able to take things like document access and actually mate that to uh, IP addresses and locations on the network to see not only if, you, if a, a user or insider could get to a location, but you'd be able to see in continuously what they would be able to get to and if that had changed based on your policy or what you're looking for. So that's it for, for for this uh, example, thanks for watching and uh, have a great uh, day or evening wherever you are.